I know, this is a weird title, but hear me out. At the end of the day, fragrance, perfume, cologne, whatever you want to call it, is a luxury. We don't need it. Even if you consider yourself addicted to fragrances, you will survive without them. However, being a luxury, like many other luxuries in life, having it can elevate your life experience in ways that are very special, even transcendental. It's not necessary to assess your intent behind wearing the fragrances that you wear, but it couldn't hurt. In fact, I do believe that is one way to be aggressive with anything in life, is assessing your intention. Always assess your intent and you will always have an aggressive approach that will usually be effective. I personally have different types of fragrances for different functions. This helps to establish clarity in my collection, and I have a large collection, so clarity is very important. Many of you will identify with these functions, and you might already be considering them in your daily fragrance use. Nonetheless, here are some clear reasons why I and many others wear fragrances. And just to add some interest, I have a mainstream and a niche example for each function. Let's dive into it. Disclaimer, and this should go without saying, but sometimes it needs to be said, good hygiene is of the utmost importance before applying any fragrance with the hopes of it making you pleasant to be around. Please consider bathing every single day and brushing your teeth every single day, hopefully multiple times a day. It's also not a bad idea to wash your face and moisturize it twice a day. Let's get into the fragrances. My first function is when I simply want to smell pleasant or smell good or blend in something easy, breezy, something likable, but something that's ultimately gonna fade into the foreground of whatever the heck is going on around me. And it may not even be all that noticeable, but there are times when I want that fragrance. There's times when I just wanna smell fresh and clean and easy and inoffensive. So with that, my mainstream pick is gonna be Dior Homme 2020. I've talked about this one quite a bit and I do enjoy it. It was weird that they called it Dior Homme. They just completely replaced what was the beauty and the trailblazing artistry of the original Dior Homme series. And they've turned it into something simple, to be honest. But it's not basic. I find it very pleasant. I find it even a little bit interesting, but more on the simple side of things. It's citrusy, it's woody and dry, it's musky, it's fresh. It doesn't have a lot going on, but you can wear it anytime, anywhere. That's what I do. When I don't know what to put on, when I just want to blend in, this is a great mainstream choice. For a more niche choice, this is a little bit off the beaten path in terms of what you would find as your mainstream, easy to wear, highly marketed fragrances out there, but it does have a very wearable quality to it. This is called Embrace. This is coming from Habibi, New York. This is a rose and oud fragrance. There is this kind of rich, slightly dark woodiness about it, but it is primarily aromatic and bright and citrusy, which makes for a beautiful duality. Lots of mandarin orange, which is a very common, bright and fresh and almost juicy citrus note. And that is made to be almost shower gel clean. There's a cleanliness to this fragrance that smells a little bit blue like this bottle, but it does have this kind of rich warmth to back it up. Nonetheless, in the air, comes off pretty easy. Comes off fairly common, but definitely less common than the Dior and others like that. So if you're looking for something that you can wear in a lot of situations, but is still a little bit different, do check out Embrace from Habibi, New York. My next function is mood. We're talking about affecting the mood. We're talking about a personal scent. We're talking about something transportive. I wear this for me. I have two examples here out of many I could have chosen. My mainstream example is coming from Hermes, which is a designer house. This is called L'Ombre de Merveille. This is not really what I would call a mainstream fragrance because the scent profile does not smell like everything else out there. It does not smell like it's following trends. It does not smell like it's trying to be appealing to as many people as possible. This is kind of an unusual fragrance, and it's not something I'd wear all the time, but boy, is it beautiful. Boy, does it transport me. It paints a picture in my mind. When I smell this, I see myself walking along a beach at night. It's warm, but the breeze is a little bit cool. 
I can hear the ocean, I can even smell a little bit of the sea foam, and I can see all the stars in the sky, kind of lighting up the water. That's the image that I get. There's this soapy, fresh quality to it. There is this very calming tea quality to it, and maybe even a little bit of an incense that's kind of cooling, and some tonka bean, which makes it sweet, but there's also this fruitiness that they don't list in the note breakdown, like a cherry or something like that, that's like a red fruit that's not uber sweet, but it does add a little bit of a juicy quality to this fresh, clean, almost soapiness. Really interesting fragrance, a little unusual, but utterly beautiful and very transportive. L'Ombre de Merveille from Hermes. And from a wonderful niche brand known as Dasein. This is called Winter Nights, one of the most transportive fragrances in my collection. This transports me to a campfire in the forest in winter at night. I'm around the fire, there's a warmth to it, there's the embers, you can smell the smoking burning wood, you can smell the coniferous nature of the trees around, but the air is cool and crisp. There is a cooling freshness in here, maybe from some cardamom. So again, beautiful duality of a cold crispness with warm woods, a little bit of sweetness in there, very special fragrance. I don't wear it all the time again, but when I do, I wear it for me and I enjoy it thoroughly. But this is also something you could wear for many other occasions, honestly. It doesn't have to be pigeonholed, even though it is called Winter Nights. Don't take that literally. If you like it, wear it. Obviously, that can go with any of these fragrances, but the goal of this is to establish clarity. So for the sake of clarity, I like to wear this for me. Now, the reason why so many of you came to the fragrances in the first place, came to YouTube in the first place to watch videos, compliments. Compliments have unfortunately inundated this space and frankly hoping that a fragrance will do it for you is still in my mind the silliest thing ever because you should be able to get compliments without a fragrance. I've talked about that several times, but a fragrance can help. I'm not going to discredit that. A fragrance can contribute to your compliment factor to people telling you you're pleasant or you smell good or whatever it may be. And the one I might reach for, for that reason explicitly, is Gucci Guilty Eau de Parfum. Honestly, I would not wear this fragrance for any other reason than to get compliments. I'm not going to just spray it on at home. I'm not going to spray it to go run errands. This is for compliments. That's all it is good for in my eyes. Now, you might absolutely love this fragrance, in which case you might find other uses for it. But for me, in my realm, only for compliments. I don't even really have a way to describe it. It's super basic. It is like the original Gucci Guilty, but it's amped up a bit. But it's not really an interesting fragrance. I bought this thinking it would be something a little different because I like the direction Gucci's going in, but this is not different. However, it smells really pleasant. It's sweet and fresh. That's kind of how I would describe it. It will get positive attention. It'll last a long time. It is what you're looking for if you want compliments. This is one to check out. Gucci Guilty Eau de Parfum. Obviously, I'm not giving it the highest recommendation, but I can say that it is effective in this realm. And a fragrance that I do actually wear and enjoy because I knew what I was getting into when I got this. This is a fragrance I tried to not like, but I can't deny it. I do like it and I do get compliments from it. So it does tend to be one I reach for when I'm looking for that type of experience wherever I'm going. Cedra Boise from Ansara. I don't need to say much about this. It is overhyped, to be honest, but it smells wonderful. Citrusy, pineapple-y, like fruity, woody, and it dries a little bit smoky. Sweet, fresh, strong, really good. Great for compliments. All right, let's talk about being attractive or seductive, trying to attract desirable people in your life, whoever those people might be. A fragrance I might wear for that is something that is going to be on the sweeter side, on the softer side in terms of personality. It may not be overtly masculine, it might have some softer nuances to it, but it is going to be a little bit different, it's going to stand out, it's going to have a little bit of a uniqueness, and it will be something that's easy to get close to. This is Long Medial Eau de Parfum. Unfortunately, a little bit hard to find these days from what I understand, but if you can get it, get a sample of this stuff. This whole line is timeless, in my opinion. Sweet almond, syrupy cherry, creamy leather, just simply beautiful, elegant, 
handsome, a little romantic, again, very attractive, something to draw people in if you're trying to attract. L'Homme Edial Eau de Parfum, the regular Eau de Toilette will do great, the Extreme will do great, the Lintense is great too, that's a little bit darker, a little bit more mysterious with its smoky and spicy elements, but still a great option. And for my niche pick, one that many of you probably already love, very effective for this scenario, succulent, smells almost like a dessert in a way, but not overtly. This is Ani from Nishane. This is primarily a vanilla fragrance, ambery and warm and sweet. A little bit of this citrusy freshness, but there's some depth here. There's a lot going on that makes it interesting. It's a powerful fragrance, so it will leave a beautiful trail, which is attractive. People want to get close to this, but because it's so strong, be careful not to spray too much because if people do get close, you're going to just be overwhelming. That is Nishane Ani. And finally, to stand out, to be bold, the opposite of function number one, which was to fit in. This is something to stop the show. This is something that may not get compliments, but it will make you memorable. I've talked about this type of fragrance so much on this channel. It is something that I highly recommend you get at least one fragrance that does this in your collection to stand out. You don't have to have 40, 50 different fragrances that simply make you fit in. I've been there and I sold off my whole collection as a result because I got so jaded with that. I needed some variety. And this is one to consider. From Tom Ford, this is Black Orchid Parfum. Not an easy wear for everyone. A very specific fragrance. It has focus. It is not trying to be anything else but itself other than maybe the original Black Orchid. Of course, this is a flanker and that's another one to consider for this scenario. But this is boozy. You still get this earthy truffle that is a little bit it's hard to describe. It's not stinky or funky, but it's reminiscent of something dark and a little unclean, but in a good way. Sweet and chocolatey in a way as well, and a little bit floral, but not quite as much as the original. Honestly, this is more on the earthy, boozy side of things. Again, that truffle still being quite prominent. This will make you stand out. This is a bold scent. Wear this at night. Wear it with your sexy badass clothing whatever that may be all black is never going to be a bad choice be bold in the room this will help <sighs> final pick my niche pick for standing out for being bold many fragrances i could have chosen this is a great one not something that's going to be likable by everyone not by any means this is from roger parfum dry mossy leathery animalic again not for the faint of heart but if you want to stand out and you dress the part, they better look out. This is fetish, pour on. This is a powerful scent. This is something I would dress up. Otherwise it might wear you. It is a very confident and authoritative personality. Again, not something that may draw people in. It's not something that may get them asking about what you're wearing, but they will be engaged with you because you exude that confidence that is attractive, that people want to get to know and they want to be connected to you and they probably will want to even see you again, again, if all the elements come together in the right way. But this stuff is expensive. Get a sample. Do not blind buy this. Do not blind buy any of these if you can avoid it. Get decants. Don't dig yourself into a hole with a fragrance you don't end up loving. We all know how that can go. But I do love Raja Parfum Fetish. I didn't always love this, but I've grown to really appreciate it over time and now I do love wearing it. Check it out. All right, that's it. I'm gonna have links down in the description for all of these fragrances. Do let me know in the comments if you've tried any of them and what would be your go-to fragrance pick for each of these functions. Again, it's good to have clarity in your collection. It just helps when having to decide what to wear, you maybe cut that time by a chunk instead of considering every fragrance in your collection. Consider ones that make sense for you for that function. Just my two cents, take it or leave it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace, I'll see you in the next one.